Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Lena Beresoska and I have a guest you know already, it's Marina Vorobyova. She lives in uh, Netherlands. Hi Marina. And she's a um, professional psychologist uh, specializing in eating disorders. And Marina has a wonderful history of her own problem with uh, eating and weight. But because going through this problem, she um, analyzed her situation. She gets some knowledge get experience and now she's helping women who are facing these challenges with weight who see themselves as a kind of not beautiful and they think they have extra weight and marina was also a part of my course about dysfunction of pelvic muscles and when she was talking about weight and the perception of women um the shape so welcome, Marina, to my, my podcast. Mm -hmm. Thank you for inviting again. <laughs> uh, we can talk about uh, eating disorders uh, in common, yeah, uh, because uh, they are different, but uh, everything is the same uh, in uh, our mental condition when we have eating disorder. Uh, we understand that eating disorder is a, a psychological condition. It's not a, a just a, something in your brain that you can uh, remove from there. It's your psychological condition. And uh, this condition causes uh, unhealthy eating habits to develop. So uh, it, it doesn't mean that you will eat only sweets or... Uh, only fast food, no. Uh, just your eating habits uh, will not be normal, like usually normal people do. Uh, uh, usually... Sometimes, sometimes eating disorders cause uh, uh, real health problem. Not only psychological, yeah, uh, changing, but uh, health problems, uh, and uh, you can get to the doctor first then you realized that you have eating disorder uh, what we should uh, talk about uh, young, especially young uh, girl mm -hmm. from uh, today it even can start at 9 years or 10, 11, especially 13, 14, when uh, usually girls gain weight mm -hmm. just to start yeah. reproductive function. Yeah, they start to gain weight. And our culture is uh, uh, trying to uh, make them feel like they are fat or they have not, not okay body shape. Or they should sport, do sport more or uh, eating less or something like that. And uh, sometimes this young girl start with diets, different diets. Some of them uh, can, can really uh, make some damage for their health. Um, parents usually uh, don't uh, pay enough attention to this problem. Uh, and sometimes parents cause these problems. Uh, for example, when your mother just uh, looking at you and said, hmm, I think you're a bit fatty or uh, mm, so, so fat uh, leg or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, if, even if you're not fat, even if you're just uh, normal, but... Uh, Sometimes people in this way try to motivate you, for example, uh, to go for some sport. Mm -hmm. And they pay attention to some changes in your body to motivate you. But usually they motivate you to destroy yourself. Because you start with diet and uh, this problem started. I agree with you. I would use it because, uh, as I see, there are uh, two the most kind of common scenarios how 
um, young uh, people, especially girls, become involved in wrong perception of the body in a special way. Number one, it's when they are abused by media, by the skinny models in environment like the friends and other people who says it's kind of, you should lose, uh, lose this weight because you look like fatty and it's not popular now. And another one, parents, uh, they try to make from their own children some kind of like heroes, like sports people, sportsmen, like, you know, like famous people. They think about like fame and these children have intensive sports exercise they're bullied by their own parents all the time. And um, I know from psychological point of view, this type of parents, they try to see in the children those themselves because they never achieve what they wanted to achieve. So they want the children to achieve their own goals. And that's true. So then we have this problem that children uh, when they start growing, when the sexual development started, they stop accepting themselves as a normal uh, human beings. And they try to accommodate the shape, uh, especially shape because it's coming about body size, uh, to adults' life and to adults' models, not children's models, which is bad. And um, uh, I think we should start in schools this lessons about uh, eating behavior much more early than it comes to the point when uh, we have already a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you said about sport, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, especially we find it uh, in, uh, in women who made a lot of sport, professional sports professional women. Professional sports women. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, when they start diet and more exercises uh, to achieve some new, new, new results, uh, but they get uh, more problems with that. Uh, you know, yeah, about uh, amener amenorrhea. Yeah, we have it's this. Uh, the old name is athletic syndrome or athletic. Uh, yes, athletic syndrome when actually women or girls. They stop having uh, menstrual periods yeah. and they have this amenorrhea and also this uh, they start having osteoporosis or sign of osteoporosis because yeah. because of this extensive sport uh, people lose calcium from bones and even if they drink water whatever they can take calcium in pills but it doesn't work it's just like bogus pills so they start having osteoporosis in early age when we're talking about osteoporosis in people, yes. uh, like older people and the women in menopause. In unfortunately, yes. and, and their uh, and their uh, sport career uh, will closed very fast. Yes, because, because yeah, it's a lot of traumas, and, and they have uh, psychological trauma too because. Uh, no, they hear that they need to lose more weight to be strong. They need to stop eating properly. And many of them even stop living properly. I mean, they always in a stress. Stress of competition be the best one. And we have data, medical data, uh, from some research that intensive sports actually shortens people's life too, because it's not a good idea to put your body in extreme situation and extreme by physical um, by physical strength, actually, because your body takes more energy and has less nutrition. And then we have a physical, physical stress, energetic stress in your body, which is not good because it destroys your body. Exactly, it destroys your body. Yes. I know. And uh, you know what I noticed? Um, when we were in Ukraine, mm -hmm. I saw uh, uh, girls, they're doing gymnastics. Uh, they had trainings, uh, uh, little little girls three times a week, and uh, a bit uh, more adult, like tw 12, 13, 14 years. Uh, they trained every day, uh, six days a week, which for is three unbelievable. For three hours. 
and uh, I saw that they uh, do not they do not eating through the training. Uh, sometimes they drink uh, really a, a little amount of water because trainers said that. And uh, trainers very often said something like, you're too fat for this. Uh, you should get slimmer uh, because it's gymnastics. Yeah? Uh, yeah. But what I saw here in Netherlands, uh, my daughter uh, started doing gymnastics here uh, it's uh, a bit different uh, kind of gymnastics but anyway mm -hmm. it's a different uh, type of gymnastics but anyway um what i saw uh, that here trainers never said something like or oh, you gain a bit of weight never also they have uh, once a week uh, two hour training and uh, during this uh, two hours, they have a break for eating and drinking. It's it's like <laughs> I just imagine our trainers. Yeah, you know, I for school, when, if someone will school, eat <laughs> during the at, training. I I like you know uh, sometimes they have the nightmares. Not very often, but in my nightmare, I see our. Uh, physical uh, activity tissues because they were bullying me because I was a little bit chubby, not very chubby, then I lost weight. But I I hated to run, like I hated fast running. I didn't like to, to run fast. I could run like, you know, in a m moderate uh, way, but could run. And I like walking now. I can make easily 16, 20 kilometers just walking. But I don't <laughs> like that. It's, it's not for me. And uh, because it was chubby, sometimes, you know, like when you run, it's your body is shaking and maybe it doesn't look very nice. And I could hear how they were laughing behind me that a chubby girl is running. Look at her. It was so bad. And I felt so bad. So I tried to escape any, any exercise, any, like I was running from school just like do not go and i always had very bad marks in physical activity even if in other subjects have, have excellent marks right but uh this is what the what adults do especially who try to do some uh, try to teach us how to live and how to exercise and believe me these teachers were alcoholics so they never run themselves never did anything <laughs> they just spent time watching us running right and yeah just like was so very very good so work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just were whenever they would come into the this uh, exercise uh, lessons the time, they were just drunk already. So they didn't care what this, the pupils would do. Would do just run, run for one hour, forty five minutes. Okay, just run, run or play some games, whatever. But just don't disturb it because we had run. We don't want to see anything. And it was this impression about sport. But later in my years after. After bay after I delivered my second child, I was going to a gym, uh, and I was um, I liked fitness. I liked bodybuilding, so I had a beautiful shape, not a very muscly, uh, not that like you know like a man, <laughs> but I could prove it myself and other people that actually I like sport, but not that type of sport where you have to run and have this extensive and intensive sport activity because it's yeah. not for me and it's not healthy and i'm glad that you brought this to the like to discussion this this topic to discussion and now uh, when we're talking about eating disorders and perception of your weight i know you you were telling a lot of stories about your own problem how you were going through this like you know problems mental problems that you were thinking you are very fat when actually you were not fat. I, I I saw your pictures, you know, and then you were telling ch uh, children and teenagers and women that you had this bad experience yourself. And that's why working with your psychological problems, with your perception of body, you're now absolutely different and you can help people with more because you have your own experience. Can you tell us a little bit about this and how you actually came to conclusions that you have to stop bullying yourself you have to stop abusing yourself abusing your body going through different types of diet mm -hmm. uh, I should say that I have never been fat 
you never uh, yeah but you were thinking that you have extra weight yes yes uh, but i i have never uh, really i have never been fat uh i was really really slim child uh i was slim until uh, my 16 years and then uh, around 16 i gained weight um around 10 kilos maybe so uh, i was uh, 62 kilos for my uh, for my height I... it's it's really okay uh but i thought it's not okay <laughs> uh i had to read the a lot of these magazines with uh, beauty photoshop bodies and i thought i should be like this uh i started training um also before this uh, i was going to dance club and uh, i had really good body but i think it's not good uh i start um, some diets uh, i lost uh, near uh, 11 or 12 kilos in three months i thought wow great <laughs> uh, uh, then i lost a bit more and i was uh, 48 kilos wow. uh, but i somewhere i find an information that uh, for bullet you should be uh, your height minus 120 and I had only 190. <laughs> and I thought I should be 47. What is wrong with my head? I, I didn't know. But uh, uh, I can't uh, get this point. I have, I have never uh, achieved this 47. Thanks God. <laughs> or or some, someone. Uh, then I was around... Uh, 50, 51, uh, I thought it's not okay, I should train more, I should eat less, uh, I smoked, uh, I drink alcohol, because um, when you didn't eat enough, you try to find some, some energy, some way, yeah, some way to, something to do, some new friends and something like that, it, it, it was awful. Uh, when I when I saw myself uh, in a mirror, uh, when I was fifty kilograms, I saw myself like I'm now. Now I am uh, eighty five, and now I'm looking at the mirror, and I realize that I saw myself like this when I when really I was too slim really too mm -hmm. slim when i saw these pictures of me i thought what what, <laughs> what did you What's do with yourself yeah. mm -hmm. just how can you imagine that mm -hmm. it was awful and, and uh, it's really it's really a disorder it's like you toxicating your brain with all yeah it's really disorder uh, mm -hmm. it's um uh, uh, it's something with your body image, like you uh, imagine Run. yourself. Yeah. So it's not okay. You should go uh, to uh, to specialist, yeah, who can help you. Because uh, it, luckily, I didn't get uh, uh, Anorexia. real big problem with my health, uh -huh. yeah. But uh, y you can you can get this problem uh, a, a lot of, and you even. Can't and can't imagine what can you get. Uh, it's like a lottery. It's like a lottery. And I interrupt you that unfortunately eating disorders in psychiatry because usually psychiatry is dealing with that. They didn't pay too much attention on psychological part of this disorder, and mm -hmm. that's a problem because medicine usually denies and denies still, still denies many doctors denies psychological part of any problem even any disease mm -hmm. uh, people who have cancers they have stress huge stress and how many doctors dealing with stress or at least provide some help psychological help when people in stress they uh, try to treat the cancer but nothing about 
like no psychological condition of the of this person of the patient, and the same with mm -hmm. eating disorders. But what is interesting fact? Usually, young, like young women and men also too, but mostly young women, young girls, have this problem like bulimia and anorexia. Uh, but can you imagine the young teenage, like teenager or young woman, would go to psychiatrist for treatment? That's usually they come to the psychiatrist when it's too late and the body starts to destroy like on like itself. Like it's it's very bad. And then they say, oh, it's serious problem because the mechanism of self-destroying started. And to stop the mechanism of self-destroying, it's really difficult. And why I'm saying that, because I know there is a program, every cell has a pro program of self-destroying. And if every cell has a problem, has a program like that, I'm sure there is a program of self-destroying the entire body, which has happened, especially with they have eating disorders, because the body cannot survive such a stress and lack of energy, lack of nutrition, and then psychological problems. There is no meaning in life for these people. No meaning. It's everything about body. And um, now we are lucky to have psychologists like you and some other who dealing with this eating disorder, but I would say uh, through psychological condition, not just like, you know, that this you have to go to psychiatrist just to get some medication or whatever, because uh, usually it doesn't help in the, in the uh, late stages. And um, you know, I think we should point that if you need help, you don't necessarily to have, have to go to a psychiatrist, go to a psychologist first and talk and discuss this problem, talk you, about your image, about the perception of your body. And if the psychologist decides that you need like other help, some medication and improving your weight through completely different approach, even like diet, uh, we need sometimes a professional nutritionist to help. And 99% of nutritionists, they're dealing with, with what? With extra weight, like with diet, how to lose weight, not how to gain weight, only a few, dealing with this because it's difficult uh to tell the person they need um gain weight and i'm dealing also with patients who prevent and with women uh, who plan pregnancy and they have such a low weight comparing to the height that mm -hmm. the periods are coming like in every two three months sometimes half a year and of course they're going through the false diagnosis like unfortunately in medicine we hardly pay attention on the size of the body when we talking about even some diagnosis and some problems. So, and it's what you went through, it's a good kind of uh, example for people to hear and know that it could start much earlier than you start realizing something wrong. So you came to the point, when you came to the point that it's something really wrong and you have to change the perception of your body. Did you have some mentor or did you have like some help, professional help? I don't know, so I'd like to hear so have you get rid of this strong perception of your own body? Uh, I, I have the situation that is most common. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, after years and years of uh, diet, of, stri of strict diet, uh, after I had uh, depression, I start overeating. And I gain, uh, I start uh, to gain weight. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't do anything with that. I start a new strict diet and I get nothing. Uh, next diet and I get nothing. My weight just stuck and go nowhere from one position. But when I start eating a bit more, I just uh, gain like uh, two kilos a day. It was really disaster. I, I, I was in in so fear to gain weight. So that time I get my fear come true. <laughs> Not only dreams come true, yeah. Uh, and I thought that something is not okay. I tried to find a reason in. Um, medical um, way so i get do some blood tests or something like that and 
and uh, it <laughs> it was okay. Uh, and I understand that something is not not in medical. Um, it's not. not in medical, it's not the medicine. It's not. Yeah. It's not medical field. It's your. It's something. Something else. And I found an information about uh, um, eating disorder consulting, uh, psychological consulting. Uh, I had uh, first meeting, and then uh, I worked with uh, dietologist. And then I had a uh, psychotherapy, uh, and I came to the. I just realized that, uh, yeah, that I was destroying myself, for mm -hmm. a lot of years. Uh, I had this that uh, dietary thinking. I when I when I just was looking on my uh, on my plate, mm -hmm. I didn't see the food. Mm -hmm. I saw the um, the, size, the size of 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 food probably Cal calories and grams. I didn't see the food at all, and uh, I started to work on this. Uh, first, uh, I should say that I uh, gained weight, a lot of weight, uh, and now I'm started to to lose it very mm -hmm. very slowly but the pro I, I saw that process is started even sometimes i can overeat uh like like every people can <laughs> you know but uh i hope that i have a remission that i won't come back to this well you have more knowledge and more experience you become also a professional who helps people to deal with the same issue you had when you were yes, younger? Yes, yes. I, I thought that I I need to uh, to take some uh, studies to get more education in this area, and uh, and now I I understand how it works. Uh, I know and, that and what I done wrong. <laughs> yes, usually like people who goes into medicine or psychology or some related uh, professions. They usually have some problems or had some problems in the past and they're looking for questions why it's happened to them and how can they know more about this problem. And uh, that's why I probably became a physician gynecologist because I, I was I stuck with one serious gynecological, gynecological problem and I wanted to know more. So why it's happened to me and then what is the next step in my life? And that's why I choose this specialization. But uh, it's good when you choose in the specialization that then makes you um like that you make makes you professional and then you can help other people yeah so uh, uh, I, I, I can i can i want to tell something about statistics mm -hmm, you need okay. because yeah. it, it's really impressive uh can you imagine that every hour uh to be clear every 62 minutes uh Every hour in our world, uh, someone is dying uh, in case of eating disorder. Wow. Every hour. Eating wow. disorder causes death. So it's, so when, it's a really problem. When we're talking uh, about, about some uh, epidemics like, you know, like uh, a pandemic, this COVID pandemic or some other <laughs> yeah. pandemic, uh, we even do not understand how many people are dying because of other problems uh, that yes. that can be corrected, can be treated, and it's, yes, it's... it can be treated. But usually, uh, people came to these uh, thoughts uh, too late. Mm -hmm. uh, as you understand, the the most common reason of this uh, death is anorexia. Yeah. Uh, and one, one of three, uh, usually women with anorexia, one of three will never, uh, never be treated from this. So yeah, because they start. You will stay uh, with anorexic, uh, with this diagnosis. Yeah, with uh, anorexia, mm -hmm. uh, and five six percent of women with anorexia are dying. Wow. Five, six, I know anorexia has a very high level of 
uh, death. Uh, because as I said again, uh, it starts with self-destroying of the body. So our brain pushes the button of self-destroying because yes. uh, yeah, it's it's very serious. It's very difficult to make it uh, to turn the point to recover it and yeah to take when, it back yeah. And we know a lot, a lot of uh, kind of models, uh, like photo models and even actresses and even actors who died because of eating disorders, because they tried to follow the trend of slimy, like, you know, same um, people they should be on a screen, which is not right. And I'm, I'm glad that you brought this topic in our conversation is coming to the end because some podcast is coming to the end. And I would like to tell that if some of you, our, our new viewers have, eating problems, even like eating disorder problems, uh, please, please uh, stop playing this game with your body and go and see if you want psychologists, especially psychologists who specialize in eating disorders like Marina and uh, never leave it like without your attention that something is going wrong in your body. Mm-hmm. I will provide you some statistic information, uh, so we will put it maybe... Uh, An information about the video, yeah. And, um, yeah. It would be great. Uh, because okay. it's really interesting. And, uh, yeah. and please uh, read this information because uh, it can open your eyes and you start thinking differently. So thank you, Marina. And I really appreciate your time that you came to us uh, to have this podcast and i wish you all the best mm -hmm. thank you thank you for inviting again okay bye bye <laughs> <laughs> so it's time to eat now because we have lunch and uh should i think we should eat like healthy diet you know something more natural and uh, we can share our lunch if you want. So what would you like to eat? What do you need for your lunch? Uh, I, I have no idea. <laughs> you, How about you can cucumber? I can share a cucumber with you. Look, it's healthy. Oh, okay. yeah, it's really healthy. 